So I want to talk about various different things. I want to talk about burst versus consistent damage and their stats and probably some other stuff on the way. Because in the global version, we really value burst classes. We really value spec classes. That's reflected in the cost of building. So starting off with burst, they're your rocket launcher, you know, they do big damage and then it takes a little time to reload. Translating that into Lost Ark is you're building your meter on, say, Summoner, and then you unleash a cure. A cure is about 65% of your damage. That is your rocket. Everything else up leading up to it, that's you reloading. And overall, that's pretty similar with the other classes. I mean, so if you talk about Surge, for example, you're building up your meter and then you're unleashing Surge. And surge and like three of the skills is the majority of your damage. Rage Hammer, your damage is divided into four skills, all in which you're gaining meter to unleash a big burst. Igniter, again, pretty similar. You're getting your gauge to pop igniter mode, and then that's where all your damage comes out is during the igniter mode. So your damage is a little bit more spread out than the other ones, but still, you're a burst play style. For burst, it's very important to just not miss your big hitters. Now, consistent damage, on the other hand, this is basically your SMG. You're constantly unloading. You're always be casting, basically. Your damage is more evenly spread out through all your skills, meaning it is at least a little less punishing to miss a skill on a consistent class because you're probably going to be going off cooldown on something else real soon anyways. So a few examples on these would be, you know, Emperor Kana, Taijutsu Scrapper. You know, Emperor Kana will still have to interact with cards, but it doesn't really do much with red skills. It only has one. So you don't really pay that much attention to stacking spending as much. And then Taijutsu Scrapper, you basically forget your gauge exists. They're very APM heavy. So let's talk about stats real quick. Spec is often associated with burst and swiftness is often associated with consistent. However, they are not mutually exclusive. Uh, when it comes to burst classes, generally you see most of them spec, but there are some crit based ones. The same thing applies to consistent classes. The majority of them are swiftness, but there are some that have crit or even heavy crit, like say perfect depression, or even spec based consistent like pistolier, DI, or evil legacy. But since the majority of burst is spec and the majority of consistent is swiftness, it's just what we tend to associate them with one another. Spec is probably one of the better scaling stats in the game, probably even the best I could say. And it's unique in the sense that it affects every class differently. For example, it greatly affects Empress Arcana as that is the burst play style and the spec skill will directly increase red damage, red skill damage which is what the Empress playstyle is all about. And that's why Swiftness is generally associated with consistent classes, because the things that's boost from spec generally does affect what's good on the Swiftness build. Because Emperor Arcana, for example, again, only uses one red skill. They don't really need spec. And instead, they benefit better off the cooldown reduction off the Swiftness stat itself, so they can spam more skill. So now that we've gotten those out of the way, let's talk about why. And honestly, I think a huge thing is going to be influence. You see the screenshots, you see the clips, you see these huge crits and everything like that. And other people want to do that too. And you know, even a lot of the big names in streaming, a lot of their clips and a lot of their characters, or at least what they're known for is generally a spec based or a burst based class. You know, how many poggers in the chat are you going to get for consistent damage as opposed to a, you know, billion hit crit? And on top of that, you know, it's perceived power. It's what we've talked about before, it's tier list. There's no lie, we are tier enjoyers. We love tier list, we wanna perform. Nobody wants to put in the time for a character that will not pay out. Now the problem with tier list and stuff like that is it's misinformation like I've talked about before, or at least information people are not using properly, I should say. Because all these Punisher Slayers who are picking up it because I saw Zeals do it, they, they got a long ways to go. You know, you got spec break points, you got to get the same gear as him to hit like him. His rotation might not work on yours until, for a while but until you can properly set up. Because yeah, if you're playing something with a spec break point and you're not hitting it, your damage is going to drop significantly and the class isn't going to be that fun. But I want to take this one step deeper and go into the game itself, or at least game design. The first thing being items and buffs. There's a cooldown between using Dark Grenades, there's a cooldown between using Edge Fence, there's a cooldown of using damage buffs from a bar. There's also a cooldown between your burst. If you align all these things together, you're going to benefit even more on a burst class than you would on a consistent class. Because every time you're using all these things, or at least most of them, you're going to be using it with your burst at the same time. You're shoving the majority of your damage into that window. So you're aligning your cooldowns together, basically. Now, obviously, a consistent damage class or engraving will benefit from this, just not as much because the majority of your damage on a burst class is being put into the buff zone. Now let's talk about boss design. Let's just stick to Vicus for this one. G1, you only have a certain amount of time, certain amount of damage, I should say, 
until you get to the split. That burst class is gonna be able to pump out most of that, if not all of it, right away probably, if you're a juiced up party. And even if you are not a, like a super juiced up party, you know, a transformation class might not be able to get their full transformation in that time, and then they might have wasted some of that transformation time because there comes a cutscene afterwards. So burst class has a good chance of, or a good ability to eat up all the damage in that phase of the fight and really just push it faster. Now when the boss transitions in the middle, or if he's before the gates, or he's doing pretty much most mechanics, he's probably DR. DR meaning damage reduction, meaning you're not gonna do really anything to him when you're hitting him. But if a burst class pushes him to that mechanic and that starts up and then they can use that time of DR, just hit him with skills, refill their gauge and start prepping for their next burst. A lot of consistent classes can't really benefit as much out of it. Yes, you do have the transformation classes. So you do have DI, you do have EVO, or an Arcana could start building up cards in that time. So those are two really big things when it comes to rating content that really affects classes. Now, cost is a tricky subject, so I'm just gonna lay down a few things to keep in mind if that is a factor to you when making a class. The first being, the spec items are just gonna cost you more. The demand is there, and not only that, but there are more spec builds than anything else. The second is that if you can run off meta engravings, you can save a lot of gold. Precise dagger, mass increase, if you're gonna be doing Deadeye once the changes comes in, propulsion. The downside is the market probably doesn't have much of any of those up on because people don't think about them as value, so they just vendor them as opposed to selling them. And then the last part is gems or more accurately, level 10 gems. We're looking at about a 270K difference in cost when it comes to a cooldown versus a damage gem. So keep in mind how many damage gems your engraving uses. Luckily, book prices have gone down on everything pre-artist and just everything will always go down over time. So yeah, if cost is a factor, keep those things in mind. Now, like tackling cost, talking about difficulty is very rough. There's a lot of variables that go into it. And honestly, a lot of it ties into the balance choices that they make for this game, in my opinion, and into a lot of other people's opinion, which is a topic I want to cover in a different video. So for this video, I'm just going to cover some major themes and things to keep in mind when considering difficulty on your class. So at a base, you know, burst is consistent. Burst, you have to make sure you hit your burst. Consistent, you have to constantly keep up time. I don't particularly think either one is extremely harder than another. I think there's a lot of other variables that go into the classes that make it beyond just burst versus consistent. A big thing is going to be, is your class a hitmaster or is it a back attack or a front to class base attack? Because it can be pretty rough chasing around trying to get the proper positioning, as opposed to a hitmaster which can hit from any direction, they're non-positional. And another thing is, you know, range and durability of your class. If you're a paper class like Reaper up in close range, that's probably a reason why people see it as a 4 POV class. But it also does have some really good movement tools, but also it might just kill you if you use it wrong, which is another thing to think about is some classes have better movement tools within their kit, which on the topic of movement, you know, is it a swiftness class? Does it have tripods or something that increases its move speed? Because obviously with speed comes the ability to do mechanics easier along with repositioning yourself. And then the last major thing is going to be class gimmick. The most noticeable one is going to be Arcana's cards. You gotta decide when to use them. You have so many cards, they're RNG, so you don't know when you're gonna draw what, so you kinda always have to be prepared for any card. So yeah, keep those in mind, but also, you know, everybody plays differently, everybody finds different comfort in different things, so a class that might be hard for one person might not be hard for another. And again, I will talk about these more and go deeper into it when I talk about balance and design in a different video.